Today I want to talk about shopping in the years from 1880s to 1920 and in particular the Williams uh, branch houses around the Midlands. I suppose it's an odd topic to be doing in the context of the decade of centenaries but shopping was as important then as it is now and it's part of our social history and there were great improvements in shopping around the Midland towns from the 1890s to the 1920s and then it went into the doldrums at least in the provincial towns until the 1960s when the supermarkets were established out of these old branch shops and smaller groceries and indeed the old grocery come licensed premises disappeared very largely in the 1960s whereas it was the staple in the 1900s. So the model I've taken is that of the Williams uh, branch houses across the Midlands. There were also ones owned by P&H Egan, the other large Tullamore firm, but we're not dealing with those today. Now the founder of the Williams branch houses was Daniel E. Williams, who came from Mount Melick in about the late 1860s. And he was born in 1848 and he had a meteoric rise to uh, wealth and improvement over the years from his coming to Tullamore until he bought his first branch house in Tullamore in 1884 in Patrick Street. This advert I'm showing you now was a, is an advert celebrating the centenary of the Midland Tribune that actually Williams was in business in the town or employed in the town for 17 years at that point. Now, the branch houses are conveniently listed on the old headed paper of the firm. And you can see there the red cup T sign, which was the original uh, logo of the firm until the 1930s when the four men, which you can see at Eugene's, pub in Tullamore and at the brewery tap and also in Clara became the, the the logo. Maybe that was Daniel Lee and his three sons. Who knows? There's another convenient map of the branches also shown here in the next shot. And the last one then of that grouping shows the branches and they were at Tullamore, Borb, Port Arlington, Mount Melick. Kilcormac, Mount Bolas, Gieshel, Rahan, Clara, Ballycumber, Clonaslee, Dysert in Westmead, Ballinagore, Belmont in County Offaly, Moat in Westmead and Dalystown. And that was not to mention their other businesses in Maltings and bonded warehouses. So that's an overview of the firm. It's one of the largest private firms in Ireland up to the 1960s. And in this picture you're looking at the Patrick Street shop which was the large shop with Daniel Lee Williams uh, on the top of it there painted on top or lettered on top it was uh, beyond that shop with the sun blind and uh, at the end of the street was the old military barracks which was there from 1716 until 19. Uh, 22 when it was destroyed during the civil war it had been vacated by the army the british army earlier that year and there's another view of the patrick street situation in the 1940s with again the williams shop with no changes and the new barrack of 1937 now this is a police barrack now so that would date that picture to a somewhere between 1937 and 1942 because that that Patrick Street shop of Williams's was transformed with a new front by Michael Scott in 1942. Now the head office of the firm was nearby in what was more recently the Music Academy but at that time was known as head office and it was the old house that was built in the 1750s and Williams was a great master of marketing and promotion and he had this picture taken of his businesses and his staff for some of his uh, food catalogues which w which the company produced from the 1900s and which included 
many of these pictures of the branch houses. And the motor car, of course, was Williams, not surprisingly, was the first person in Offaly to have a motor vehicle. And it made the journey from Burr to Tullamore in 1898 in three hours. And you can see there the old type of wheels and the red jug, of course, in the window and the old wooden carts, which many houses in the Midlands had for use for daily chores up to recent years. The shop then was substantially refurbished in 1896. But what's interesting is that that model then became the model for all the branch houses uh, around the county and in Westmeath. And of course the staff lived upstairs. So if one goes to the 1901 or 1911 census, you'll be able to see who worked and lived over the shop. The archway, some of the older viewers will remember, as the access to the bar uh, there behind, which was a well-known pub and which had um, Michael Scott and Sean O'Sullivan work in the interior. Just to show you what other shops were like, we're looking here at the archway to the right and you can see family and workers outside what was Rattigan's, later Sean Rafter's copper urn. This view would be in the early 1900s. Uh, and uh, now here is the view of the shop post-1942, probably taken in 1970s when Gilson's was on the corner and you had the big Michael Scott designed facade. It was a very impressive shop when it was built because we have the photographs to prove it. And the wholesale, of course, was an integral part of the branch house system and a Mr. Woods was in charge of it and he's there with his his arms stretched out in the branch, in the wholesale, which in the early days was behind the head office or behind rather the Patrick Street shop. And later then in the 40s, the wholesale was moved to what had been Williams's glass factory on Church Road and was more recently demolished for the new Aldi supermarket or little, I should say. Uh, the second little shop in the town. Now, Williams was nothing if he was not an innovator, and you can see here his electric-powered plant of the late 1890s. Ga or electricity did not become generally available in Tullamore until September of 1921, when the gas lighting was changed to electrical lighting. Boys, of course, worked from a young age at that time, and it's people left school early, and these are young lads in the bottling plant, which was up the yard behind the head office of the Williams firm, uh, beyond the, the bonded warehouses and tea stores. And they were famous for their mineral waters, as was P&H Egan. And, of course, they had a business with a lot of synergy. And here is the bonded warehouse, more recently the Tullamore Jew Visitor Centre, which was erected in 1897 and the canal boats then were used to bring goods from Dublin and to Dublin so it was quite a good uh, economical system and the new malt bins were erected there about 1911 and he had a number of other maltings around in the B. Daly distillery and also in Banagher and later in Kilcormac and that's just another view of the bonded warehouse possibly a little earlier because you don't see the malt bins in that picture and you do see the cranes in their correct positions in the uh, in the f facade of the picture. The canal system of course was integral to the business and the Williamses and Egan's had their own barges until about 1960 when the canal closed to commercial traffic. That's possibly Daniel E. Williams there on the left with the hard hat. It looks like him in terms of his uh, size. Now that's a scene that's more familiar maybe to some of you. The head office in the, 90, in the late 1970s. And what was it like to work there? Well we do have the ledgers or some of them anyway in the Offaly archives now. And you can see men worked for their lives on different ledgers, sales ledgers and credit ledgers. And that was the view on the first floor, ground floor reception area of head office. And again, 
uh, that would be a site that would have been recalled to an extent anyway by a lot of Tullamore people up to the mid 1990s when the office closed uh, after the purchase by Green Corps. Up the yard then it had a, was it had a familiar ring because when one was in head office and you were looking for somebody, often the retort was that he or she was up the yard. And there is the yard behind the head office with all the bonded warehouses and the tea stores. And beyond that, the oats store, which in the 90s was converted by Tom McNamara into a kind of a supermarket uh, drapery and was the first shop in the Midlands to have an escalator. So he too was an innovator. Now, the Williams was very interesting because he developed this branch house system where all the shops were modelled on his Patrick Street shop. And you can see here the lettering overhead and the the shops were mainly owned by him personally until 1917. This shop was Graham's in the 19th century, the MP he was later. And, uh, and later in the 1960s it became Wires, which a lot of you would remember. A very nice store there, the usual thing, the licensed grocery. And here's another one which might surprise you in Bridge Street in the house that was erected in 1748 and is now a jewellery and a coffee shop. And again, he sometimes acquired these stores not by purchase, but by taking over a mortgage on a premises and having it then for a few years until the mortgage was discharged. And about 1920, that shop reverted to Shields Pharmacy and on the left where the steps are and on the right uh, it was part of the William or the Egan Seed and Manure. Now we're moving out of the country and as I said he was strong in leash with shops in Port Ardington, Mount Melick and here at Clonaslee. The model the same, a little bit less grand there with just a signboard over the door which might suggest that he was not there for too long although they had a shop there, I think, until the 60s. The Belmont shop is another important store that was had an extensive business, and some of its books survive in the Offaly archives. Perhaps the most unusual one is the old Beehive pub in Mount Bolas. It was totally reconverted or demolished and rebuilt uh, in 1904. It was a single-story thatched house, which some of you will have seen the photographs in the Lawrence collection. And here it is now as a wonderful new store. Later it became Butler's back in the 60s. And it still looks very well. And here is one of the motor cars of one of the directors, one of the family members, IR102. Williams again was clever in that they had a branch inspector, a bit like the pubs in England, anybody worked in those that went around checking on everything to see that all standards were kept up and that there was no pilferage and that stocks were in order. The usual concerns running a system. Yes, this is the one I meant to show you earlier. That's the beehive. In this hive we're all alive. Good liquor makes us funny. And if you're, tra if you're dry, come in and try the flavour of our honey. Well, Williams discarded that old board and he went all out and modernised the place in the early 1900s. Another one then that still survives and is a pub today but not a grocery is the shop in Geishel, uh, a building that was probably erected by Agent Trench in the 1860s as part of the modernisation of the village and then it became a nice branch shop in the 1900s. Ditto and Rahan where there's uh, uh, the place called Attached, which some of you will know. And here it is as a Williams branch shop, which had remained until the 1960s. Another wonderful one at Ballycumber. And you can see the range of goods that were sold in these country branch shops. And the lighting, of course, outside. It was all very well done. And uh, again, I have another picture of the Rahan shop. Seems to be before the store was erected to the front. And you can see the bricks there on the canal quay, which were probably, well, almost certainly were made locally. 
and were being sent to Dublin. It's also interesting to see the names of the photographers on the pictures. Some of them were from here and others were maybe use it as an address of convenience to come once a week or once a month to take the pictures. There's another good one here of Bor where Williams had shops in in Duke Street and in Castle Street. And here's Castle Street in the early 1900s. And just to the extreme left before that petrol uh, receptacle there is it was the Williams shop. And beyond that was the Maltings, which later became a Williams Waller Maltings in the 1960s or 70s. Uh, it, at that time, it was in the name of the Woods family, I think. And beyond that, again, of course, the castle, Borough Castle. So here it is with the Manchester Martyrs Memorial to the front. And you can see the two very fine shops to the right there. And beyond that, a new business, Lee's Motor Garage, with the wide facade, or the wide archway, I should say. So, um, interesting picture there. The, the memorial is 1894. And that picture was probably taken about 1910. Now, this is another one in Burr. I think that one is in Joke Street, um, a three-story building. We saw something like it a moment ago. And here we are now in Ballinagore in County Westmeath, where he had a few shops at Turles Pass, Moat, and here at Ballinagore. And a lovely one in Kilcormac also. The facade is, you can see, just an outline if you're driving past it today. It was a fine shop and Egan's had another one on the far side of the street. And there's another view of it. And you can see the range of goods from canned and bottled goods here to draperies. Very extensive uh, offering. And that picture was by Lawrence and is available in the Lawrence collection. Clara not looking so good there, but the branch house was another large place here. The sign, I think, of the Williams, the, the, the 1930s sign, is hanging still here on this premises. And beyond that was their hotel to the right. The branch did uh, feature in the attempted destruction of the Clara Barracks, which was across the street in June 1920. Yeah, this is the other part of River Street here, or with the little hotel there where the lamp is. So there's quite extensive properties there. And another view, now this would be a, a tarted up view of the facade. You can see what the photographers were doing. A lot of us think we're experts with Photoshop, but no less were the photographers in the early 1900s. And that picture was taken by G.B. Simmons of Athlone, who had a family relation in business in Tullamore for a short period in the 1970s. Mount Melick, of course, would have been very special to Williams because he was born there in 1848. So that uh, concludes the, the survey of the shops. It's a very interesting model and uh, a lot more could be said about retailing, but I think it's worth focusing on Williams to see the extent of the innovation and the novelty that he brought uh, to retailing. He did, of course, very well uh, during the war years because it was a great time for the farmers with lots of business for them due to the war and there was a lot of money about separation women uh, these are the women whose family soldiers or relations were at the front they were getting an allowance the farmers were doing well and everybody did well out of it as a result uh, and that carried on until the end of the war and then there was a period of stagnation which unfortunately almost lasted until the 1960s. And at that stage it was time for change and the supermarkets came in headed by Dick Williams who was a grandson of the founder and um, we all remember the five star supermarkets. So I hope you enjoyed that survey and uh, we may get an opportunity at another time to focus on the other aspects of retailing during the decade between 1912 and 1921. Thank you very much.